All right, Nick, myth number three for the shoulder. I have shoulder pain. Uh, I have to have a rotator cuff problem, right? So what someone comes in and they typically will have pain in the front of their shoulder. That's the most common place to have pain. And so automatically, they've probably gone on Google, right? And checked a couple things out and they may have self-diagnosed themselves with a rotator cuff problem, or maybe they heard from their neighbor or a family member, oh yeah, I tore my rotator cuff, that's exactly how I felt, but uh, might not always be the case, right? Yeah, I mean, that would have been a whole lot easier if it was just, yeah, all right, we're done. Uh, our job easy. No, there's, there's a whole lot going on in the shoulder uh, that can cause pain, and that could be, like you said, that right in the front of the shoulder, that could be the back of the shoulder, that could be down the arm still coming from the shoulder, so. Yeah, it's still pretty complex. I mean, the first one here is the labrum. And the labrum is huge because labrum is still one of the most important things that I, I think labrum and rotator cuff are, those two uh, are, are a little bit harder to distinguish between. They, they can have a lot of similar pain, similar problems. So really being able to, to split those two out, I would say is one of the harder things to do. So labrum though, I mean, any dysfunction, tears, anything to the labrum, also gonna be a pretty big deal too. Okay, all right, so uh, there's some special tests that we would do in our office to try to find out and, and separate those two tissues that are, are pretty reliable in terms of our ability to sort that out. Besides uh, separating the labrum from the rotator cuff, what are other issues or joints or structures that can cause problems? So next one on here is AC joint. And this one is going to definitely be a little bit more distinct. Usually it's going to be more of a pain on the top of the shoulder. And you're going to feel like it, a lot of times like it's a pinching. It's more when you're going overhead or anything like that. But it's much more uh, of a distinct location where you can kind of get on top there and feel that too. Okay. And yeah, we'll typically see that and when we instruct our um our students that come in, it, that's end range motion usually. So if you're, if you feel really good through the motion, like usually if you have a rotator cuff or even a labor problem, like through the middle of the motion, that's going to be most irritating. And then if you're okay and you get way to the end, you feel that, like Nick said, right on top of the shoulder, that's usually when there's an AC joint problem. And it's commonly missed with um, some of the second and third opinion stuff that, that we see. And sometimes it's just as simple as getting that to move a little better, doing a joint mobilization um, and promoting that motion that kind of cleans that up. So if, if I'm going to see all these problems on my plate, on my schedule, AC joint problem, that's easy to fix. I want to see that. So next here we have brachial plexus, or this is some kind of nerve irritation that's going on in the shoulder. So let's talk about that a little bit, Nick. Now this one, this is going to oftentimes present similar actually to uh, some of the rotator cuff problems. And that's where when we see it, it's like uh, sometimes people will come in with a script and it'll say, uh, rotator cuff tendonitis or something like that. But it's when you tease it out, no, it's actually more of that, like you said, nerve involvement. And this can be, yes, at the shoulder, but this might be referring all the way down into the fingertips even and, and anywhere in between. Yeah, for me, it's when someone comes in and says, yeah, I think on the backside of my shoulder and it goes down my arm. Well, or even kind of on the outside or lateral part of the shoulder, usually if it's a rotator cuff or, you know, a, a labrum or stuff like that, it usually presents in the front. But when someone says, yeah, I don't have any pain in the front, it's just kind of down the back side of that. Uh, there's not many structures out here besides your radial nerve that is going to be irritated. And I don't know about you, Nick, but I've been doing this for a long time. I've yet to see like a, an anterior or lateral deltoid strain. Like it, it just doesn't happen. So when someone points or their delt. If it happens, you're better in three days and you're yeah. not going to see us. Yeah. Yeah. So the only, I mean, the only, if you're talking about rotator cuff, if someone has a fall and they fall on the backside of their shoulder, sometimes that will nick your rotator cuff. But man, I can't remember the last time I saw one of those. Usually that's more of a nerve irritation. And like we said, with AC joint stuff, a lot of that gets missed for some reason. Um, I, I think with, that, with the nerves, we're see, saying radial specifically, like some of the other ones that do go across the front, that's where you can get more of that confusion of separating is a nerve versus like a tendon. Yeah. And the patient will typically tell you that when they come in, They're, they'll say, yeah, I've got numbness, tingling, burning, or they have pain that's going down there. I'm not just staying in the front of the arm. So they'll usually give you a pretty good clue on that. Scapular dysfunction. Those are, those are two big words there, Nick. What does that mean? Shoulder blades not moving, right? There you go. Now okay. it, it is almost that simple, but people don't think about this. So if you look at everything else on here, uh, scapular dysfunction is probably associated with it or the cause of those other things. Because if that shoulder blade is just not moving the way that it's meant to, 
it's going to cause a whole mess of problems at the shoulder. And that's usually because of one of two problems, a passive or an active restriction. So when you go to lift your shoulder up, and this is the third time I'm saying this because I had two shoulder IEs this morning. When you go to lift your shoulder up, two thirds of that motion comes from the glenohumeral joint or what people would consider like a ball and socket joint, which it's really not. It's more like a golf ball on a tee because it has so much mobility. Two thirds of it come from there. One third of it comes from your ability for your shoulder blade to rotate up and forward. So if it's not doing that because of a passive restriction, meaning the soft tissue structures that are attached to that thing are tight or if the connective tissue in the back is not allowing that to rotate up that could be an issue so you've got to kind of get in there and dig that out uh, or it could be an active restriction there's a bunch of muscles 17 that attach to your shoulder blade if they're not all working together then that shoulder blade is just not going to rotate properly and it's very rarely all one or the other it's usually a combination of you know the shoulder hasn't been moving properly for a couple weeks to a couple months to a couple years and there's a soft tissue restriction that we have to work on. And then also the muscles are not strong enough to rotate that forward. And then that causes a lot of the compression, which is what the, the presentation ends up being. I have pain in the front here. And we often have to tell patients, yeah, the problem is here um, in terms of where your symptoms are and where the tissue irritation is. But the real problem is your shoulder blade. Your shoulder blade is not moving the way that it should. And then the last thing we have here is referred pain from the neck. So someone has pain in their shoulder, but it might be coming from their neck. How does that work? This is similar to where we talked about brachial plexus, where there's, there's nerve involvement. And so the, the nerves that go to form the brachial plexus, right, they go, they start up into the neck. And as they start coming down, uh, if there's that uh, a restriction, whether it's, again, soft tissue, whether it's joint restrictions, um, lots of different things that could be going on at the neck. But that impingement there, that compression on the nerves here can be referring down and it's the same thing. We talked about like, does it go to the front of the shoulder? Does it go to the back of the shoulder? Depending on what nerve is involved, those all have to be cleared up as well. Yeah, our patients come in and they'll kind of be like, yeah, I don't know if this is related, but like, I think I have some neck problems too. And I, I always tell them, it's really rare to have a neck problem without any shoulder involvement. And it's really rare to have a shoulder problem without any neck involvement. So this is kind of, you've got to check all this stuff out because a lot of times this will get missed and someone will say, yeah, I still have this shoulder pain. It moves fine. And I, I don't have really feel like I have any weakness, but I still have a lot of pain there. And it's usually because the neck wasn't cleaned up. So you have to make sure that you're doing that when you come in for physical therapy. All right. So if you want more information about the shoulder, all you got to do is go over to robinsptwest.com slash guide, and you can get our ultimate guide to getting rid of your shoulder pain. So this is a 50 page magazine that we have developed that has all sorts of stuff in there, including self tests that you can do at home to try to figure out what is causing the problem. Is it more my rotator cuff? Is it more my labrum? Is it more nerve? related. There's exercises, stretches, soft tissue mobilizations in there, behavior modifications. There's information about supplements that you can take in order to increase uh, the healing process in terms of what's going on in your body and all sorts of other information I forgot. Anything else that I forgot in there, Nick? What other? I mean, yeah, there's going to be more than 50 pages than that, but yeah, go over, check it out because it really is pretty robust as far as uh, being able to figure out what's going on with your shoulder for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to take a shortcut and you want to come in and see me or Nick, then all you got to do is call 610-841-3555. We're actually doing a lot of shoulders right now because of an ad uh, that we have up a post that we put on Facebook um, that letting people know that we're um, kind of experts in, in treating people with shoulder problems. So if you have interest in that, then give us a call. Uh, we'll, we'll send this to your ads free, by the way. I didn't say that. So all you got to do is go fill out that information. Please give us your full address. I don't know what's happening, but, but when I say address, people just put their street. I don't know what town you live in. So you've got to give me the town. Um, and if it's a different state than Pennsylvania, put the state in there. But make sure you put your full address in there and we will send these to you. Uh, they should be done in the next week or two. So uh, hold tight and uh, we'll get that out to the mail uh, to you. And that that is myth busting uh, for the shoulder. So Nick, thanks for your time. I had fun talking about this and we'll see everybody soon. Great. Thanks guys.